Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnMoon.com and today I'm going to take you along on a typical day in the life of full-time bloggers slash parents of six here in the summer. Now, the reason I share in the summer is things vary so much. There's really no such thing as a typical day depending on the seasons, depending on what kind of activities we have going on which tends to be more in the summer. And Luke and I tag team just about everything. I get asked a lot what part of this business my husband does. Do know that there is so much more that goes on behind the scenes that you just simply don't see. Any of you who have started a blog or a YouTube channel definitely already know that. But even though I deliver to you each week two videos and two blog posts with either recipes or some kind of project, it in a lot of ways looks effortless and like I'm just kind of sharing along what I'm doing and there's almost like a camera following me around. But really to capture all of that actually does take quite a bit of planning and effort and I wanted to give you a little glimpse into that today in just a random day in the summer. So the day started with my husband waking up bright and early. He likes to wake up well before everyone else and he goes and works out. Usually he gets back home around 6 a.m. and then he'll usually take whoever is awake until I wake up, which I don't really put a limit on what time I wake up in the morning. I know a lot of people get a lot of stuff done by waking up early. I'm more of the type where if I have something that I need to work on and I need quiet and the house, you know, isn't most of the time, I would rather stay up super late and then just sleep in until whenever. And so I like the freedom to be able to sleep however late I need to. This morning that was about 6.30 because we had a lot of things going on. Now I didn't stay up super late last night, otherwise I would have slept later but I didn't stay up late, I didn't have any huge projects to accomplish last night, so I was able to get to bed at a reasonable hour. This morning, I milked the cow. Where's my little log thingy? I always, how do I lose it every day? My old log? I think it rolled away over here. Seriously? Yeah. We're a little bit out of each one. I don't drink every bit of it. Start milking. And then we have ISR swim lessons every, pretty much every day this summer except for weekends with the three youngest boys. I taught my older three kids how to swim all around age five or six, but I really wanted to expedite the process with the younger three because I am so stressed out by water. I love letting my kids run and play, but anytime there's water nearby, I'm hyper aware, almost to where I like to avoid those situations altogether. And that's obviously not super practical because a lot of people have lakes and ponds and pools, and I do enjoy those things. So I really wanted to prioritize swimming. Ready? Tell me when. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Can you send to me? So if you haven't heard of ISR, it's basically swim rescue for ages six months through six years. My five-year-old is pretty much 100% swimming at this point. He has a skill checkout later this week. And then the instructor told us that the three-year-old will likely have skill checkout next week. And then I had to run by the store and get some supplies for blog photography this afternoon. And then we all met back home around 10 a.m. So that is where we are currently. We did a little bit of harvesting in the garden for some of my recipes. We have a whole bunch of basil. Jenna, we should make some more pesto. Yeah. Sage, parsley's doing well. Let's see if we can collect up some jalapenos and peppers. I don't remember what these are, but I know one thing, they're spicy. Did you even check this one? What? These get bigger. They could, but that's, that's fine. That's good enough. 
So today I have photography planned and that's kind of it varies so I usually only need to do one photography day a week for the blog where I make a couple of recipes or if it's a project a lot of times that will fall outside of a normal shoot day just because I'm usually capturing along the way but something like recipes I try to knock out a couple in one day so that way I can prepare by getting the ingredients and then I, I know what I'm doing in the afternoon so during afternoon nap I know that my day today is photography and I can focus on that one thing. That's something that I've learned as a blogger over the years that I didn't really know in the beginning that you just sort of learn as you encounter things is that planning photography days, for example, with your meals, and I definitely still sometimes have to do this, but what I try to avoid now is photographing what we're eating for breakfast, lunch, or dinner because my kids are always waiting and I can't get the right shot unless I push it all off until a rest time for the kids or if they have some other activity where I can make the meal, focus on each stage of it, photograph it, and then of course we'll eat it later. But usually in a time crunch, like right now, it's tempting to say, okay, I have a couple recipes to shoot in the afternoon today. Why not just make one of them for lunch instead of making something else for lunch? But then what will inevitably happen is I'll spend so much time trying to capture the process of it or the ingredient shots, things like that, that it pushes into when we need to do our afternoon rest time and our lunch and I'm not able to focus, everything feels rushed. And then I forget about things like props. So for example, today at the store, I knew that I wanted to shoot a from scratch tomato soup recipe for the blog because tomatoes are in abundance. So I wanna seasonally time that one. And I want to shoot it with something, not just a bowl of red soup. It needs to have something with it. And I didn't have time to make any bread right now. I'm also doing an einkorn flatbread this afternoon. And so because I'm already doing that, I also didn't want to make bread for the props. So I grabbed a $1 loaf of French bread today at the store. And that will be a prop for the tomato soup to make a little garlic bread to sit next to it. But these are all just things that you learn over time. I am going to get an easy lunch going of cheddar waffle BLTs. I've showed those on here a million times, but they're just so easy, especially when you have a lot of fresh tomatoes. I have bacon from Fed from the Farm. My 10-year-old daughter brought it up. She was like, we should do cheddar waffles. I'm like, yes. That sounds like a really quick and easy thing that we can do before this afternoon's activity, which this week is art camp. A friend of mine is hosting art camp. And so the older three kids go from one to three to that, while the younger kids nap. And then that's when I'm gonna get my blog photography done. I mentioned earlier today's video is sponsored by replica surfaces it is difficult to get a good photo and sometimes one of the top complaints I hear from my blog students is that they want to do photography a blog but they don't have a great spot to take pictures they don't have an Instagram worthy home and the truth is that is totally fine if you've ever seen behind the scenes of bloggers creating content a lot of times it's a mess all around us and one little spot has the perfect lighting, the perfect background, and that is where we're photographing the food. So most of the time whenever I'm photographing food, I just get a really tight shot of the food and it's sitting on a nice background, but then everything around is chaos because that's the reality of blogging, especially when you're home with kids. Replica Surfaces solves this problem if you don't have great surfaces in your home for product photography, food photography, whatever it is that you're interested in doing. You could probably even sit a small child in front of one of them and get a cute little picture. They are lightweight, stain resistant photography surfaces that look like natural surfaces. So they have options for marble, cement, wood, concrete, and they even have a linen one that I like. They are an essential tool for bloggers, photographers, shop owners, anyone with a story to tell. 
you can benefit from having a collection of these surfaces. Replica surfaces helps you to create a mini studio anywhere you are so that you can instantly have better photos. Even me personally, some of my best light in my house is in areas that don't have the best surfaces. So for example, for the longest time, I would take all of my food upstairs because there's one window, depending on the time of day, which is almost always the afternoon for me whenever I'm photographing, that has the best light, but it doesn't necessarily have the best background, but I'm seeking out that light. Whereas my kitchen, it was always my intention to have this nice quartz for photography, but with the kitchen being north facing, it isn't always my best light. So sometimes the best light and the best surface don't always coincide. And so it's nice to have something portable that you can bring to the area with the best light. You can mix and match based on what type of product you're shooting and style you'd like to achieve. There's over 150 different combinations by mixing and matching surfaces. Replica Surfaces also has a VIP Facebook community with over 10,000 members who share their photography and help to encourage fellow creators. Start building your collection today. Go to replicasurfaces.com and use my code farmhouse to get 15% off your first purchase. Okay, now I'm going to make up my einkorn flatbreads. We've been making these a lot lately and it's time for them to make their way to the blog for my readers. So I'm just going to do three cups of einkorn flour. Now with blogging, in the ideal world, which I've gotten a lot better at over the years, you are always working ahead so that you have a recipe perfected before you try to shoot it. This helps, I mean, you can always adjust things later, obviously, as you continue to try something, you can update the post, you could see that something doesn't work while you're testing and you could adjust it, of course, right then and there. But it just saves so much time if you start incorporating something in your regular diet and then after you've made it several times, get it on the blog. That is what I try my best to do so that by, by the time I'm shooting it for the blog, it's something that I feel like I've perfected. Because even when you've made something a thousand times in your kitchen, you probably don't have all the measurements. It's just something you throw in a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Blog readers want the measurements. And so I do suggest taking lots of notes and making it lots of time for your family leading up to when you're gonna make it on the blog. This is one of the main reasons that I'm always on kicks where I make one thing over and over again for a while. Um, mostly it's something that I'm thinking about putting on the blog and I really wanna perfect it. And, we do break the recipe back out, obviously, in the future, but we will definitely be making it a lot in the weeks leading up to a blog post. I'm gonna add three teaspoons of yeast. Now you could also do a quarter cup of sourdough starter, a teaspoon of salt. I'm just gonna give that a mix, add a cup of warm water and two tablespoons of olive oil. Now, of course, this will be on my blog, so you can go print off the recipe probably about the same time this video comes out. That will be available as well. I forget which day it is on my blog. I like to work pretty far in advance. So I have my content all written out for the next, well, through August. So I already have some fall things written into my schedule. This helps me when I'm planning my week, which I do at the beginning of every week or in, in the perfect world. So sometimes I'm able to even get that done before the beginning of the week. I sit down with my notes app on my phone and I write out each day Monday through Friday. I almost always take off on Friday, so usually if anything's written there, it's just like answer a couple emails or something like that. Usually, if anything does show up in there, it it's something that I wrote in throughout the week because I didn't get enough accomplished on the other days, but typically I'm able to get everything done by Friday. So I'll have Monday, which is almost always uploading and scheduling videos. So I get my hard drive back from my video editor on Sundays and then Monday morning, 
I upload the videos, add the tags, create the thumbnail, title, all of that. That particular video didn't come from the week before, but the week before that, because I shoot it, two videos one week, give her the hard drive, she has the week to edit it, and then when I get it back, usually that's why the lead time is so great. So that's why a lot of times, if you saw something really instantly over on Instagram, and then you're seeing it two weeks later on YouTube, that is why I have to hire help for my business because I could never get it all done. And so the way that I do that is by having a team of people that help me, and one is my video editor. So Mondays consist of scheduling videos, which takes longer than you might imagine to upload them, add in screens, make a thumbnail that's going to grab people's attention, description box, all of that kind of stuff. I will usually schedule my emails to my email subscribers for the week, and then I usually have some other kind of task that isn't huge. Like I don't try to shoot videos on Monday or do a lot of photography. Sometimes if I'm behind, I need to do some blog photography that day. But normally I shoot my videos on Wednesday and Thursday. I'll, ch I'll choose one video for Wednesday, one for Thursday, and then I will usually do some kind of photography on Tuesday. Now those can all get flip flop based on a variety of things, but I get a majority of my creative work done in those days. My main goal is to always create a list that allows me to get something done every day, but not be so overwhelming that I can't do all of my normal duties. Because as a mom, I have to cook, take kids places, spend time with my kids, and so there's really only so much time per day. And if I can't fit my entire to-do list in two or three hours of dedicated work, which is usually an afternoon rest time, and then one hour on either side of that, then it's too much and I'll feel stressed. But if it's a manageable amount of work, I can knock it out in some concentrated hours. And you will find too, if you're a mom that wants to start some kind of business, whether it be an Etsy shop or a blog, you can get a lot done when you don't have a lot of time just because you don't have a lot of time. It actually helps you to get more done because you know, okay, I have T minus two hours before I'm getting interrupted again. And if I don't get all of this done, it's not getting done. And then you just go, you just ignore everything else around you and you concentrate. And that is what I feel like I have been able to do over the last five and a half years as I've done this. All right, there was my little blog tip for you. I'm going to divide this into about eight equal pieces. And then I'm just going to roll them out, not quite to tortilla thickness, but pretty flat because it's a flat bread. And then grill them up on a preheated cast iron skillet. It's really easy, which is why we have been relying on these so much lately. I served them a few weeks ago with an Indian dish, but flatbreads go with pretty much any meal that you just need to stretch. So if you have a meal that has like a meat and a potato and a vegetable, and then you want some kind of quick bread component, they're wonderful for that. The reason that I'm using yeast is just that. This is the kind of thing, in my opinion, that you make whenever you haven't planned ahead. And so the sourdough defeats that. Now, trust me, I would prefer for it to be sourdough, but this is kind of a recipe for those moments where you need something quick. I'm gonna preheat my skillet and just add a little bit of oil, grill them up, and that's it. And then, well, that's not it. I have to photograph them. <laughs> this is the easy part when it comes to blogging. Next comes the creative, which is great, but it can also be harder than it looks.
Next, I'm going to get some tomato soup going. I did not yet photograph the einkorn flatbreads. I'm going to actually take them in to my dining room where there's a south facing huge window. I've never actually photographed in there before, but it does have the best light because it's south facing. So I'm gonna see how it goes. For the tomato soup, I wanted to create a fresh version for the blog because tomatoes are so in season right now. This is something that I feel like a lot of people could use and therefore would be searching for. I imagine making some kind of Pinterest graphic that says, best way to use up all your summer tomatoes or something like that. That's the kind of thing you wanna be thinking about as a blogger. What will get people to click? Because it's so right now, it solves a problem that they are currently having. And for me right now, it's cucumber, zucchini, and tomatoes, basil. Uh, those are the issues as far as like what the garden is overproducing. So I know that's what I would be looking for. And so other people are of course, at least in the Northern hemisphere looking for. I do have a solution for the cucumbers as well, but I'm gonna be shooting that in a video tomorrow, a meal prep video. So stay tuned for that. For this, I'm just going to get an onion and some garlic, sauteing in some oil or butter in a stock pot. I'm going to add in a variety of tomatoes, bone broth, and then salt, pepper, herbs, and I'm also going to top it with some of my fresh basil. So stay tuned for that recipe coming soon to the blog. Now as a photography prop, I'm going to cut this in half and half of it I'm just going to add butter, some garlic, powder probably, cheese, and then I'm going to sprinkle it when it's done baking with some fresh basil because that'll just be like a really nice backdrop. And then I'm also going to cut the other half into crouton shape and then drizzle with olive oil and salt. And then that way I can, if I decide I want to put something in the soup, I might sprinkle it with a little bit of cheese and then add a little crouton or fresh basil on top of it but I need to make them because I don't have any croutons. So that's what I'm gonna do with this. All right, another tip I have is to keep some special props and things in a separate area away from your normal stuff. So I have some tea towels and tablecloths, things like that, that I only break out whenever I'm doing food photography. Now this one's starting to get a little dirty because I usually put them right back because I'm even trying to reduce the wear on them, but they don't get used regularly. And then also just keep things like cutting boards and maybe some plain white plates, different things like that are very helpful when you go to photograph. I also like to collect antique things. So I have some antique silverware and cake servers, wooden spoons, things like that, that make photographs a little bit more interesting. All right, well that is all the work time I have time for. 
I'm going to go and put all of my footage and photos on my hard drive. This is something that I do every single day after I create content, whether I have time to work on it, edit it, anything beyond this right now, I will make a folder on my computer that says tomato soup pictures, day in the life of a blogger video, which will be this footage, flatbread pictures, organize it all. It only takes a few minutes, but it's really important, especially because like today's vlog, I captured that throughout the day. I took some footage with my phone at swim lessons. I took some with a little smaller compact camera that I take around out in the garden, things like that. And then I took some on my Canon 80D, which is what I am currently recording in. And then I used my other camera to take the photos. And so I have so many different things, like four different places that all of today is coming from, that if I stepped away from this day and didn't first organize it, I would be lost tomorrow or the next day or whenever I get back to it. So eventually I need to sit down on Lightroom and edit these photos, touch them up, get them ready for the blog. But today is not that day because my kids are walking in from art camp, everybody's up from nap, and it is time to do the afternoon and the evening. I'm actually, my sister invited us over for dinner tonight, so we are going over there. And so we just have a busy evening and blog work is done for the day. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you to Replica Surfaces. Again, make sure to check them out in the description box below for sponsoring today's video. I hope that I gave you some insight into what it's like being a full-time blogger. It's a lot of planning on the front end and then some action-packed hours throughout the week. But most of our lives revolve around getting stuff done around this farm and taking care of kids and shuttling them to whatever activities they have. Now, we don't normally have so many activities going on, but summer is a time that we do a lot of things. So that is where we are today. Let me know if you like this kind of video. I would love to share different glimpses into our days depending on other projects that we're working on for the blog, maybe in a different season, whenever things are a lot different and we're inside more, less activities. Let me know if you like this style of video and I will add it to my somewhat regular content schedule. All right, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by our farmhouse.